In today's news, St. Vincent's and the Grenadines report two new COVID cases from the BVI and BVI Health Minister response. More businesses approved by cabinet to reopen, but the concerns continue to mount and the slain teens laid to rest in Guyana. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, a pleasant welcome to 284 News. It is Monday, the 14th of September, 2020. My name is Jafon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct out of the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Of course, our home, but we're covering uh, not only on the local scene, but regionally and internationally. Absolutely. So before we head into our newscast, Ron, we're covering updates out of Bermuda. Now, seven tropical disturbances yes. are currently making waves uh, throughout the Atlantic Basin today. We are currently watching uh, rising to power tropical storm Sally uh, that's currently developing on the Gulf Coast. We also have Hurricane Paulette moving off of Bermuda uh, within the region, as well as a newly formed tropical storms that is Teddy as well as Vicky. And now the weather experts are saying that this is the second time in recorded history that mm -hmm. we've seen five tropical storms churning in the Atlantic at the same time. And additionally, Ron, we see two additional systems uh, on the radar with slow, uh, low chances of development. So while we are in the height of the hurricane season, we want to uh, continue to remind our viewers, uh, viewers sorry, uh, that it's super imperative that we remain in a state of readiness as, as we continue to monitor these developments especially for our regional brothers and sisters who may, who may not be able to dodge the storms, Ron. They did tell us, uh, Jovan, that it's going to be a very, very active season, and we continue to see that across the region. Absolutely. We're also following reports on the ground in Guyana, uh, viewers, following the gruesome murder of the two teenage boys. Uh, they're compassionately referred to as the Henry boys. We're learning that yesterday they were both laid to rest, and tomorrow, viewers, we will be speaking to a representative of the family uh, to figure out the way forward and touching a bit on race relations within the region. So if you want to, of course, tune into that interview, uh, be sure to join our newscast at 6 p.m. Heartbreaking story, Jovan, coming out of uh, Guyana. We continue to wish uh, all the persons associated, family and friends uh, of the Henry boys and others as well our deepest uh, sympathies. Now, on the local scene, uh, the health minister uh, received three hundred face masks, compliments of the Lions Club of Tortola. That's 3,000, sorry. Um, of course, we have more recoveries, hence more businesses have been allowed to operate. Yes. Um, we're going to touch a little bit on that whole business aspect, Jovan, and, and really getting into uh, how the business owners here in the territory who are on the ground uh, and having to really feel the blunt of it, how do they feel? Of course, classes begin on September 21st for all public school students in the territory, and the BVI football community, they remember uh, Mr. Matthew Daly. We're going to touch on all of this uh, once we have the time. Our viewers will get straight into it. Now, since the Minister of Health, Honorable Carvin Malone's last address, which was last Thursday, of course, the territory has recorded additional recoveries as it relates to COVID-19. Now, Honorable Malone explained that as, as of September 11, 2020, a total of 34 additional persons tested, which resulted in 32 negatives. That included seven recoveries and the two positive results. This brings the total number of COVID-19 cases recorded in the territory to 66. The total active of COVID-19 cases to 28. And in total, as it relates to recoveries, 37 cases in addition to the one unfortunate death. Now, following these positive developments, amended uh, in the curfew order. We saw more businesses being now allowed to operate as of September 12th between the hours of 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. Now all businesses in the territory are now permitted to open except salons, hairdressers, barbershops, restaurants for in-service dining, bars, nightclubs, and pubs. Those businesses are to remain closed until further notice. Now, Ron, even prior to Cabinet's approval, many business owners have really spoken out against the restrictions yes. that are currently preventing them from operating. Some of them fear uh, that they might lose their business. 
Now today we sat down with representatives of that very business community. So let's listen in on what they have to say as it relates to what they're expecting from the government of the Virgin Islands. If we're not, if we're not sitting on and, and planning, and I'm not saying that they're not planning, so don't, don't, don't misquote me or, you know, or, you know, send me all kind of messages saying that you're saying the government ain't planning. No, I ain't saying that. But what I'm saying is, is they should be sitting down and having conversations with the stakeholders of this country. And that's every single business and business person here, because every business in this country is essential, you know? So, because when you have to pay your light bill and, you know, and you're not working, you haven't worked for three weeks or a month or whatever, because we're locked down for whatever other reason, then, you know, that, you become it's a dependent. Sad. You kind of always know what's going to happen. If there's a spike in cases, there's going to be a curfew um, or a lockdown. If, if when it eases out, when it eases when it eases down, then we're going to you know reopen again. We need to start making money as a country. You can't live in this world without making money. And if business owners pay the most taxes and they're making less money, then there's going to be less money for the government as well. So if this goes on you know, further down the road in this manner, that even the government won't have any money. So it won't, it won't just be the private businesses, you know, laying off people. It'll be government shutdowns and all kind of, all, all type of crazy stuff you only see on TV. So we, we kind of want to protect the economy, protect the be there by everyone doing their part. So I would like to see everyone do, do their part. Now, Ron, uh, those persons represented just a cross-section of our business community and really speaking to the fact that they need a plan. I think we've been hearing this for quite some time. Um, and while, yes, the situation is fluid, uh, what persons are from the various aspects of the business community are expecting from government is some structure, some type of guideline uh, to guide their business decisions uh, going forward. I know a lot of us are indeed breathing a sigh of relief as it relates to permission to reopen, but nevertheless, uh, a portion of the business community remains closed at the moment. And, you know, persons are duly concerned about how they'll be able to remain open for the time to come. One additional thing that we have to look at too, Ron, is the fact that, yes, uh, I think a few months ago, the Minister of Labor would have amended the law to allow for the temporary layoffs to extend, I think, for, for a few additional months. Correct. Uh, that extension deadline is actually October 31st. So a lot of companies are now at a point where they're trying to figure out uh, whether they need to, they'll need to pay off persons, uh, their severance pay or re-employ. And at this time, that is still a very difficult decision for them to make. Jovan, we've been hearing quite a bit. It's a fluid situation. There are a lot of moving parts, but I want to reiterate that uh, when it comes to the economy and business, there are also a lot of moving parts. At the end of the day, uh, it was quite refreshing to hear from uh, these business owners. They were very honest and very uh, candid uh, in their honesty. Another uh, business person that we spoke to earlier would have been uh, Miss Deborah Reynolds, yes. who echoed a lot of the same sentiments. So viewers, if you had not had an opportunity uh, to see that live with Jovan and uh, four different business owners, be sure to check out our website as well as our Facebook page for a very uh, honest and candid interview as they share their experiences on the ground um, as business owners. Absolutely. Now, continuing on, in an official press release from the National Emergency Management Organization and the Ministry of National Security out of Kingston, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, it has been announced that St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Friday, September 11, 2020, reported two new COVID cases from what they say comes from the BVI. Now, the detailed release received by our newsroom outlined that both cases are returning St. Vincent and the Grenadines and nationals who arrived in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on September 5th, 2020 from the British Virgin Islands with negative PCR results. Now, the positive test results on September 11th were as a result of a six-day testing as part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines protocol for persons traveling from high-risk countries. Now, it was also further noted that all passengers who arrived in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Americans Airlines Flight 945 on Saturday, September 5th, 2020, were all cleared uh, by negative day five PCR test uh, for COVID-19. Now, this, Jovan, is the second occasion in recent months that St. Vincent and the Grenadines officials have made claims of important cases from the BVI of COVID-19 of that of returning nationals. 
In the first instance, we would of course remember a passenger who traveled from the British Virgin Islands on July 15, 2020, tested positive for COVID-19 on arrival to St. Vincent and the Grenadines on July 18, 2020. Now, this was then used as a directive by the BVI officials and territory-wide testing on the island of Joss Van Dyke was conducted as well as a lockdown, which was later lifted after all tests uh, returned negative and officials in St. Vincent and the Grenadines then later informed BVI officials that the passenger consequently tested negative for the COVID-19 virus. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has now recorded a total of 64 uh, cases, uh, 61 of which are recovered with three active cases. Health officials out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines stated, and I quote, that these new cases from the BVI emphasize the great importance of strictly enforcing all of the protocols, including the quarantine orders and testing that are designated to protect its residents. They further stated that over the past five months, they have worked very hard to contain any possible spread of COVID-19 in St. Vincent and the Grenadines by aggressive testing and quarantine enforcement. Now, all persons entering St. Vincent and the Grenadines must comply with all of their uh, measures uh, if they are to avoid, uh, this is the quote, if we are to avoid rising levels of the disease seen in other Caribbean uh, countries. Now, in a statement via social media in response to the claims coming out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, BVI Minister for Health and Social Development, the Honorable Carvin Malone, said, and I quote, a number of concerned persons have inquired about the press release by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as it is the second such preliminary report issued referencing returning uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines residents from the BVI. He continued by saying, the first of such reports when finalized was reversed when verified by COPRA. BVI will take the high road in the interim until such time as this preliminary report is finalized. An official response is warranted once finalized and so too it will be. Your concerns, he said, are taken seriously. Now, of course, Jovan, you mentioned about the uh, recent cases where we have had uh, quite a, uh, we've seen an improvement. Uh, most importantly, uh, many more recovered cases and we've seen a drop What's important when we look at this situation as persons continue to repatriate to their various countries, particularly coming home, uh, not only leaving the BVI, but coming home to the BVI, um, I, I think it's important that we not get bent out of shape. I think it's important that we not take this um, personally as countries. I think it's inevitable uh, when persons are uh, on the move and repatriating uh, to and from that this will happen. That does not mean that your measures, I think, personally are uh, not strong or not um, uh, concrete. I think in, in, in many cases, we're going to continue to see cases like this, but not only on the part of our regional counterparts, but for here, uh, with us in the BVI, it's important that we not uh, take this personally. For persons now moving back, um, what are we going to say to um, when persons come in for uh, whatever reasons their test results um, may have tested negative, but when tested, they become positive. It's, 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 it's not a case where we want to begin to throw the um, blame game, whether to or from. I'm glad you, you hit the hammer on the nail, Ron, because ideally what we've been doing, especially within the region, I think across the world, we've been yeah. really trying to play the game, the, the blame game. Who's Nobody responsible? Nobody wants to take responsibility uh, for the virus. Uh, we've, we've seen this from the inception where we saw a lot of uh, stereotyping happening, being that the virus originated in China. We saw that between the Americas and China. Now we see uh, some of that uh, trickling down to the Caribbean region. Of course. Like you said, Ron, uh, this is a virus. It's inevitably spread. Uh, it, it's going to be our reality for a very long time. So ideally what we were supposed to be doing, instead of you know, outlining where it came from, let's try to deal with the cases as they come. And you made a very good point about contracting the virus in transit because it's, you know, for persons to leave the territory, they must first do a COVID-19 test. They must be cleared. So clearly this individual um, must have been cleared as a negative um, and I'm not the one here to make a call on what exactly what happened, right. but um, seemingly she or he may have contracted the virus in transit uh, to another country. And that is a very, very strong reality. We saw this with persons entering into Barbados, uh, tourists, as, as a matter of fact. So I think uh, we, we, what we're trying to do here it, with the blame game is, is incite fear. And we have to be very careful with that and, and really focus our energies on managing 
uh, this virus run. Most definitely. Viewers, still ahead, the BVI Airports Authority uh, has a given permission, the Ports Authority, sorry, has given permission for cruise ships to dock for very specific reasons. We're going to touch on that and break that down. And the BVI Football Association, they are paying tribute to Mr. Matthew Daly, uh, the BVI's most recent homicide victim. We have that uh, tribute coming right up. All this and more after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. Yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, like we mentioned before the break, the BPI Ports Authority recently announced that permission has been granted for the acceptance of technical calls and warm layups at its seaports. The government of the Virgin Islands has agreed on conditions to allow cruise ships as well as mega yachts to carry out short-term berthing at the BVI Ports Authority Cruise Pier as well as the Port Purcell dock uh, under strict health and safety rules. It is important for the BVI Port Authority to stay in line with the government's decision to suspend uh, cruise line visits to the territory during the current COVID-19 pandemic. But the cruise business can be continued via what is known as a technical call or a warm layup. Now, viewers, it's very important that we understand that this is not a cruise call. The vessel does not have any passengers on board and will be berthing exclusively to take on bunkers, provisions and spare parts and other services. No crew members will be allowed to disembark from the vessel and no attendance on board the vessel from shore-based staff will be permitted during the stay in the BVI. Now a technical call is usually a short-term duration uh, from a several a few hours to a couple of days while a warm layup would be for an extended period of time. A technical call implies that a vessel would be allowed to practice uh, of short duration um, Charge duration, sorry, for several hours to three hours a day. A technical calls allow for a ship to refuel as well as restock, and um, there would be no contact again between people dockside and from the ship. A warm or hot layup allows for a vessel to be docked for longer periods of time, in some instances for up to a year. Now, during that time, the vessel is out of service but can be mobilized into service at a short notice. Warm layup entails a reduced level of crewing and assumes a reduction in regular fuel consumption, repairs as well as maintenance costs. Both the cruise ships and the mega yachts would be acceptable vessels to be considered for technical calls and warm layup considered critical to our economy as we are to adapt. Now, viewers, the BVI Port Authority believes that maintaining a link and continuing to service the cruising industry in a safe proposed manner with technical uh, calls as well as the warm-up can be a vital part of the rebooting strategy. Now, Mr. Dean Foy, the acting managing director of the BVI Port Authority said, and I quote, we wish to thank the government of the Virgin Islands and our local shipping agents for its collaborative approach and for working closely with us on this initiative. Providing supplies and fuel is vital is of vital importance for the marine industry, end of quote. Mr. Foy went on to add that, that cruise ship companies will appreciate the BVI's reasonable stance in providing safe shelter and berthing arrangements with respect to existing restrictions and full compliance with health and safety rules. Now, Ron, uh, there were a couple of concerns I know coming out yes. of this headline, especially since persons were very concerned that by us entertaining uh, the docking of these ships within our, our waters, uh, we could possibly welcome uh, COVID-19 to our shores. But here we see the officials coming forward to reiterate that not only will the crew be prohibited from exiting the vehicle, but persons will not be able to uh, access uh, the vessel as well, sorry. But in addition to that, the territory will be able to benefit uh, financially from these stops. I know many uh, countries across the region are now doing this. And I think once we are able to carefully manage the situation, of course, uh, it can work out for the territory, especially in light of the fact, uh, like uh, Mr. Dean Foy said, we are looking to reopen. We're not looking to burn bridges with the cruising industry. So again, in a careful managed approach, this can actually work. 
Uh, Jovan, I do think it's important, as uh, Mr. Foy said, to essentially continue that network and keep it going. And if we could uh, be of assistance in a safe and manner, uh, um, you know, safe uh, manner, I think uh, it's important that we do our best to continue to help in that aspect. Continuing on, viewers on the local scene, the Football Association uh, joins the Virgin Islands along with the rest of the football community across the territory uh, in a united uh, condolence to the family and friends of Mr. Matthew Daly, an avid player, vivacious fan, and active supporter of the games, especially when it involved his old matted uh, FC team or the BVI Masters. In an official statement, they said, and I quote, it is with great shock and sadness that the old Madrid uh, football club received the news of the death of our brother and a member, Mr. Matthew Daly, or Shorty, as he is commonly called. Uh, lamented the FA treasurer and a founder member, as well as the vice president uh, of the old Madrid, Mr. Uh, Kenrick Grant. He said he has been very active in the club on and off the field, and he will greatly be missed. Now, Grant also noted that Matthew became active with the club when he formed the veterans team, also known as the BVI Masters, to compete in a regional veterans tournament in 2007. His passion for football would sometimes cause friction with the coach if he is suffering substituted or not selected to play. Daly was also known for being well-groomed, punctual, very competitive, and not shy in bringing attention to his abilities. Uh, they continued by saying his competitive nature made him dedicated to training and being punctual for every match day. On the few occasions that Matthew scored for his team, he would glorify his goals for a very long time, uh, reminding everyone uh, of his ability, Grant said. Now, Daly also held the position of Vice President and Public Relations Officer on the Management Council and a member of the Organizing Committee for the hosting of yearly Invitational Masters Tournament. Old Madrid Football Club expressed our deepest condolences in a statement they said to the family and many friends of our brother, Mr. Matthew Daly, an appeal to the public to give the police any assistance that could help to solve this horrific crime, concluded Grant. Uh, Jovan, we see where tributes continue to pour in for the BVI's uh, latest homicide victim. Uh, of course, this is still being um, investigated, but ever since the news uh, hit the um, airways, uh, persons from all walks of life, not only in the BVI, but across the region uh, as well, have been um, joining in and wishing um, uh, condolences and really echoing the sentiments of who uh, Mr. Daly was to them. And of course, again, we want to reiterate for anyone who may have uh, information on the uh, incident to please contact uh, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force at their uh, Access uh, 311 uh, information uh, call line. Absolutely, Ron. Um, wow, Mr. Daly, uh, I think it's a grave loss for our community, like you said, but even beyond the BVI, persons are really expressing how heart, heartful and disappointing yeah. uh, this homicide is to lose somebody within this matter. Uh, in addition to that, Ron, uh, we can also recall, and I, I didn't even realize until recently, that we did uh, once have an interview with Mr. Matthew Daly uh, on the issue of the bike ban. And I know in that regard, he was really an advocate yes. fighting for parity uh, to ensure that we're not violating the rights of our riders and really speaking to that issue as a seasoned member of the biking community. Um, so it's just, again, a really big loss for the community. Um, clearly somebody who touched the lives of so many people. And like you said, really encouraging anyone with uh, pertinent information to come forward with, to the authorities and allow uh, some level of closure to come to the family and friends of the deceased. Viewers, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, but when we return, we're getting into uh, the Lions Club. Of course, they continue on their amazing efforts to donate masks in this time of need, as well as we're following updates in England regarding um, a new app that allows us to trace the virus. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals.
Viewers, welcome back. You're watching 284 News. Continuing on on the local scene, the Ministry of Health and Social Development received a donation of 3,000 children and adult face masks from the Lions Club of Tortola here in the British Virgin Islands. Now, in a government information services release, it was announced that the face masks were formally gifted by the Lions Club Hong Kong International Finance Center and presented by the Lions Club of Tortola on September 10th. Now, Minister for Health and Social Development, the Honorable Carbon Malone, accepted the donation, stating that it was an, uh, an appropriate gesture as certain aspects of schools begin to reopen and with the assistance of the social distancing task force to ensure that face masks will be uh, put to good use. The Lions Club Vice President Nicola Dunkley along with other Lions Club members made the presentation and expressed their gratitude uh, to be able to assist with the Ministry of Health and Social Development uh, particularly during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Persons are reminded that face masks are now a requirement under the Public Health COVID-19 Control and Suppression Measure Order are to be worn in public spaces such as establishments, gatherings and public transportation in an effort to suppress and protect uh, Virgin Islanders um, from the virus. Absolutely, Ron. Great, great stuff coming out of the Lions Club. Uh, I know all the um, the humanitarian efforts and yes, the non organizations. Non organizations. Yeah, they're really trying their best to ensure that we are safe in this time. And as we begin to wrap up, viewers, an app uh, to help contain the spread of coronavirus will finally be launched in England and Wales on September 24th, months later than the British government had hoped. Uh, the Department of Health and Social Care said in a statement that trials in London District of Newham and on the Isle of Wight of the southern coast of England had shown that the app is, quote, highly effective when used alongside traditional contact tracing to identify contacts uh, of those who have been tested positive for the novel coronavirus, end of quote. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, described the app's launch as a defining moment and said it will help to contain the virus at a critical time. Businesses including pubs, restaurants, hairdressers and cinemas are being urged to download and print a poster with the special scanning code. Customers can then scan the app on their smartphones upon arrival at various venues. Now viewers, the app was once touted as a game changer. Uh, but it has been beset, of course, by problems partly linked to conflicting smartphone networks. The other UK nations, uh, including Scotland and Northern Ireland, have also launched their own separate apps. Ron, as we continue to grapple with the effects of COVID-19 and try our best as it relates to contact tracing, here we see many nations across the world really uh, taking advantage and zero, zero in on technology, the use of technology uh, to see how we can continue to trace the virus and essentially curb it. Um, a lot of persons have spoken out against this as it relates to a breach of privacy in places like China and so on. But here we see certain nations nevertheless pushing forward, Ron. Definitely. And I think uh, as we progress, uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, different uh, game changers, as we call them, uh, in this fight, continually trying to uh, revitalize and be uh, quite um, creative. Uh, one of the things that we have to continue to look at is that we are uh, a very uh, highly technological um, yes. uh, world and if, if that's how persons are able to you know, stay on top of whatever they need to, perhaps it's something uh, to definitely consider. And we love covering these, uh, especially international stories, yeah. because it's usually a ripple effect. Whatever happens in these larger nations usually trickles down to the region. And so we want to always continue to monitor what's happening on the international scene. Viewers, that is it for today's news roundup, but you can be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com. You can also like us on Facebook at 284media. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at 284BVI. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. We will see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. We're 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284 Media out of the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Happy Monday, everyone. Have a great week. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer code. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an update?
upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works.